Hello. Today I want to have a look at another high voltage power supply module. So this is another eBay purchase. Uh, I believe this one goes for around 10 US dollars. And the specification says uh, input 9 to 24 volt DC and output uh, adjustable from between 200 up to 450 volt DC. The output current, or well, it is specified in watts, so it says 70 watt peak and 40 watt continuous load. So that at 400 watt would be something like 175 milliamps peak and around 100 milliamp um, continuous load. So that sounds pretty good and it's fairly cheap at $10. Uh, so if we look at the construction here, it's kind of like an extruded aluminium profile that acts both as a heat sink and as a case for it. Um, we got a fuse on the input. It says 3 amp. And on the output, we have a 450 volt, 10 microfarad uh, capacitor. So I hope this one performs better than the previous one I tested. Uh, I'll add a link to it if anyone is interested. Um, but it was a bit of a disappointment. So um, high hopes that this will be better. So I'll try hook it up and we'll start do some measurements on it. Okay, so I've hooked it up here. So Ben's power supply over here and just a multimeter over here so i'm not adding any load to first test here i just want to see it behaves with no load so let's try switch it on so i set my bench power supply to 24 volts uh, that is the specified maximum that will probably give the best performance so i'm switching on now and there we go so we can see it's set at 270 volt now just try to adjust that down a bit so it says minimum 200 well, that's fairly accurate now we go up here 300 400 yeah so it will it will go higher than the advertised 450 volts. So, I mean, that's not so great because the capacitor over here is only rated for 450 volt, and that's already a little bit marginal. If you are designing for 450 volt output, you should really use like a 600 volt capacitor or something like that. Um, anyway, um, this seems to work okay. So time to add some load and see how it behaves. Okay, so I've added a load, uh, these two 100 kilo ohm resistors, uh, gives us a 50 kilo ohm load, so at 400 volt that will be like 8 milliamps. And besides that I've added a capacitor over here, this is a 630 volt rated uh, 150 uh, nanofarad capacitor in series with a 1 mega ohm resistor. It's just so I can hook my scope up here. Uh, because I don't want to send 400 volt uh, into my scope probe and into the scope. Uh, it's a cheap scope, it's not rated for that kind of voltages, or at least I don't trust it with those kind of voltages. And then we have our multimeter hooked up here as well. So let's try switch it on and see how it behaves. Okay, I switch it on. And you can see we got 440 volts. So I'm just gonna adjust that down to 400 volts. Just that's kind of a nice number to work with. Okay. Uh, everything looks good. Uh, we look over on the scope here. See the, it's a little bit of ripple. Well, it's not it doesn't really look like switching noise it does actually look like a ripple and the frequency is fairly low it's like 
20, what is it, 10 or 20 kilohertz? Uh, I think it's 20, 20 kilohertz uh, switching frequency. So, yeah, so it seems like fairly low uh, switching frequency. And I'll change the I'll change the scale to 500 millivolt per division. That's kind of okay. So I think let's add some more load and see how it goes. Okay, so I've added two more 100 kilo ohm resistors in parallel, and that should give us a load of 25 kilo ohm, and that should be around 16 milliamps at 400 volts. So let me try switch it on here and see what happens. Okay, we get our 400 volts. That looks good. And if we look over on the scope here, it's quite a lot more ripple now. There we are, this is one volt per division. So what do we have like two volt ripple now? Uh, uh, it's not too bad. Um, it's understandable with the very small uh, capacitor on the output here is only 10 microfarad so I guess if we want less ripple we can just add some more capacitance okay I think let's try increase the load again and see what happens I've added a new load this time we have five 47 kilo ohm uh, resistors in parallel so that should give us a little bit less than 10 kilo ohm load so that would mean something around 40 little bit over 40 milliamps at uh, 400 volts. Let me try switch it on here and see what happens. There we go. We got our 400 volts. Seems like no problems here. And if we look over the scope, um, actually it looks like the ripple has gone down a bit again. So this looks all good and it looks to be fairly stable, did go down a couple of volts but so these are 3 watt resistors and it's a little bit marginal because they give us a maximum dissipation of 15 watt but actually at around 400 volts we are uh, putting like 16 watt into them but 16, 17 watts, something like that but it shouldn't be too bad, they will get very very hot though. It does seem like the voltage is perhaps drifting a little bit. Okay, I have now increased the load to uh, 10 47 kilo ohm resistors in parallel. So uh, 4.7 kilo ohm at 400 volt. That should give us a current draw of around 85 milliamp. So we're getting very close to the specified 100 milliamp it should be able to deliver continuously so let me switch it on here and let's see what happens okay so yeah uh, it's not too happy about that seems like we might have topped out here i can try to adjust it a bit but i doubt that's gonna help Yep. Well, that's a little bit unfortunate. So it dropped all the way down to 300 volts with this load here. So it's definitely not able to deliver the promised 40 watt continuous output, uh, at least not at 400 volts, and I doubt it will at lower voltages as well. Uh, you see the we look at the power supply over here, it's 24 watts, the current draw 1.25 amps. Um, nothing looks out of the ordinary here. We look at the scope over here, it looks fine, don't see any problems here. So it's a little bit disappointing, it's not able to deliver the full 100 milliamps at 400 volt. It is a lot better than the previous module I tested, but still um, a little bit annoying that they uh, can't get the specs right because I mean that is immediate fail if they are unable to spec it correctly Okay, just to finish up here is a view with the thermal camera and 
it all looks fine. There's one resistor that's heating up a little bit, but it's like 100 degrees, that's no problem. Only my load resistors are heating up way too much and uh, they're gonna be fried. Let's do a quick conclusion on this little module here. So, unfortunately it's only able to deliver around 20 watt output. Uh, when you see the eBay uh, listing, it will say like, oh, 70 watt high voltage DC DC module up to 450 volt. And then you read down a little bit further and then you say, ah, 70 watt is only peak, continuous is 40 watt. Okay. So I don't know where they're getting all this peak from because there's no there's no peak output on this device here. Uh, it's not like it can deliver more and then it heats up too much or anything like that. Uh, absolutely maximum it will deliver continuously is around 20 watt. So falsely advertised, uh, that's no good. However, I mean it is still usable if you want to build like tube preamplifier. Uh, phone amplifier, uh, headphone amplifier, maybe a really, really small mono power amplifier, but it's not going to power like a real power amplifier. If you had like 100 milliamps like they promised, then yes, you could probably do a decent little, uh, at least mono uh, power amplifier, but yeah, 20, mil uh, 20 watt, that's not going to give you enough power. Uh, other than that, I would say on the light load, uh, you can adjust the output to close to 500 volts. And that's not so great because the output capacitor here is only ready for 50 volts. So, yeah, not so good. Um, thermally, it seems to function quite well. This uh, design in extruded aluminium case um, this resistor over here did get a little bit hot but nothing serious however i don't see an easy way to mount it if you want to put it in a box somewhere uh, it would have been nice if there was some kind of they have thought about some kind of way to mount it they could have made the extrusion a little bit longer on both sides here added some screw holes or something uh, that would have been nice because this this there's really not much space to work with in here um, other than that, I would say it's well behaved. Uh, it's a little bit more ripple on this one compared to the previous module, but then again, it did have a 100 microfarad capacitor on the output here. We only have 10 microfarads, so I'm actually happier having only 10 microfarad than uh, if you need less ripple, uh, you can just add your own capacitance to whatever uh, you're hooking it up to. So again, I will say it cannot be a thumbs up because it's only able to deliver half uh, the watts that it was advertised as. Um, it's still quite useful and at $10, it's, you do get a lot of boost converter here for $10. So um, it's going to have to be another thumb sideways. So make sure if you want to use this that you use 24 volts on the input and you don't need to get more than 20 watt out of it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you'll have a nice day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.